We'll cover it live here and carry it live here on Scripps News, of course. Addy Guajardo in West Palm Beach, Florida tonight. Alex Miller in New York, New York. Thank you both. Now let's bring in our go-to constitutional attorney, Andrew Lee. Andrew, it's looking more likely every day, according to all these reports, that a felony charge, at least one of them is in there. Could be dozens of charges, we don't know. Are the judge and the DA following the letter of the law so far? It depends how you look at the letter of the law. We just heard no handcuffs. That's what we're hearing. We just heard the no perp walk. That's what we're hearing. For anyone else, that's something that we would be expecting. But no, nothing's been a strain. Nothing's been a problem. Everything, even when we saw the Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg making his statement, he had permission from the judge to confirm that there was this indictment. Everything's been to the T, and you'd expect that because when you're dealing with a president or any billionaire for that matter, people with means can challenge everything, suppress motions, do motions to dismiss, and Alvin Bragg doesn't want to subject this to a technical ground dismissal. At this point, even Trump doesn't know what he's walking into tomorrow. Uh, why are charges a secret? Why this unboxing ceremony for everybody, you know, except for the DA and the judge? Yeah, it's a mystery for attorneys, too. When you go to court for any type of criminal that you go into and you can do a criminal defense, you're always wondering exactly what it is that you're walking into. And that's really what the arraignment's all about. We think about the fact that you'll plead not guilty. But really, it's about this public reading. And they're going to give the defense attorney all the papers, and the defense attorney is going to be able to look at it and read and know exactly what's going on. Now, ordinarily, when you go into court, you'd say, Your Honor, I waive the public reading. But with Trump, that's a mystery. He might make them go through all of these approximate, we're hearing 30 charges or more, and it could be a very long time. But otherwise, it should be three to five minutes, in and out, wham, bam, done. Mm -hmm. So public perception, I know it shouldn't matter when it comes to the law, but this is history. And this is a former president. This is maybe a future president. We don't know if he's going to complete and, and, and win his campaign again. So a plurality of Americans do think Trump should be indicted in this case, according to a brand new ABC News Ipsos poll. But, Andrew, 47% see these charges as politically motivated. 32% said they're not. 20% say, I don't know. So by far the biggest group of Americans sees this as political. What effect does that have? Well, Chance, I have to give a demerit to both groups, the people that think that it's politically motivated and the people that think he should be indicted and that there should be this, this criminal charges. How do we know? We haven't seen the accounts. We haven't seen the evidence. I think that when you and I speak next, when we, after this happens at 2.15, and we know what's happening, then we can properly evaluate the case. Now what we're doing is saying we're on a specific sports team. We're on the Democrat team, the Republican team, the liberal team, the conservative team. Rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, and that's the only team we're going with. Facts matter, not speculation. Let's see what the facts say. Can I ask you about one fact, though, um, since we have a second here? The allegation has been Donald Trump made these payments to Stormy Daniels, his alleged mistress, which he denies, like three weeks, two weeks before the election in service of his campaign. But that was also the moment she was selling her story to the tabloids. You know what I mean? Like, if she weren't selling it at that moment, would he have given her the money at that moment? How do they prove it was for... The campaign, the timing seems reliant on when she was going forward, right? Yeah, Chance, I think you would be a very good defense attorney to try and ask these hard questions. <laughs> and I think that's what you need to do. That said, as I've repeatedly said, that you can't have this prosecution rest on one piece of evidence alone. There's going to be a smorgasbord of he did it repeatedly. This witness is going to testify. That witness is going to testify. And assuming, assuming you're questioning the veracity of the DA's office, let us not forget that Michael Cohen went to jail for exactly what's going on right Right now so clearly it was good enough to go after Michael Cohen so it seems like it's a problem for Donald Trump tomorrow finally Andrew I read in the New York Times this morning that other prosecutors out there were possibly holding off they didn't want to be the first to charge a former president with a crime you know whether they're in New York or in DC or in Atlanta but now with that barrier broken in Manhattan does it make it to where more indictments are easier chance 
I believe, although I have no reason to believe this besides being a legal strategist myself, that it would be the smartest move for every other prosecutor to domino effect indict. Just they saw this happen, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the day after, maybe not during Donald Trump's news conference tomorrow, although that would be ironic. But I think we're going to see Georgia indictment coming up. It's heating up. It's heating up with Jack Smith, our special counsel for the feds. We're seeing more and more movement all around. So it would not blow my mind that before the end of April, we have at least one more indictment against Donald Trump. And that will take away a lot of the witch hunt feeling about this one with paying off a porn star. You think it'd take it away or do you think it would look like, oh, wow, coordination? You know, like if people do see a witch hunt, do you think that would almost accelerate that feeling? I think the big difference is that in Georgia, we're dealing with a Republican team. And in Georgia, we're dealing with election interference. And in Georgia, we're not dealing with... For Trump, he gets a good pass all the time from the beginning of his campaign when it comes to misogyny, when it comes to adultery, when it comes to spending money to alleviate his problems. But that find me more votes thing and what's going on in Georgia with his own attorneys testifying against him, I think he's in much bigger problems there. I see. Andrew Lee, constitutional attorney, thank you so much. I'll probably be talking to you here again tomorrow night. We appreciate it.